border collie behavior problems. Maybe your border collie is barking at other dogs or doesn't like eye contact. Maybe your dog doesn't like being left alone or just won't settle down. Sometimes it's frustrating and exasperating trying to figure out what to do. When you've tried a few training techniques and you feel like you aren't seeing progress, sometimes you need to think outside the box and find some new solutions. Let's talk about one of the places to start, building your relationship with your dog. If you'd like to make life better for you and your dog, the Border Collies and I would love you to join us. Sometimes you have to make a significant change to the way that you are doing things. And this is what I've had to do with my new dog, Skeen. Skeen had patella surgery just over a year ago. And instead of doing puppy training, I really spent a lot of time just helping him heal from the surgery. And even though I thought I'd be able to do exercises with him to help socialize him, really pretty much all of my and his energy had to go towards helping heal his injury. It was a pretty significant surgery and he was very much restrained for a couple of months and a little bit of time after that. In Skeen's case, his patella surgery created a situation where I was essentially, at least I felt like his captor because he needed this surgery in order to have full use of his leg. And I knew that it was the right thing to do, but at the same time, I had to keep him very contained and very restricted from doing normal puppy things. So when I started doing recall exercises with Skeen, our relationship was a little bit different right from the beginning. I spent most of that couple of months of Skeen's development doing a lot of things like leg stretches, which were ultimately what he physically needed in order to heal from the surgery. When Skeen was mostly done with the recovery stage of the surgery, I was able to take him back to some basic manners classes. And I noticed right away that there were some issues for Skeen that had not come up when he had done classes before the surgery. He was much less confident and he was actually quite fearful and very reactive and responsive to any of the dogs that were moving in the class. So right away I knew I had some challenges with Skeen. Are you Mr. Untrainable? Are you Mr. Untrainable? I was struggling with Skeen using some of the training techniques that I've used successfully in the past but I just found that I would get to a certain level with Skeen and I just was not moving forward with him. And it's just been in the past couple of weeks, I've been taking some new courses and just thinking a little bit differently about my relationship with Skeen. And I started to realize that after the initial reaction that he had to some of the classes and to other dogs and the fear and the, the lack of confidence that he was showing, that he hadn't shown before, that I was I was dealing with all those things, but my own frustration was also building. And I realized that I was also stuck. Skeen was stuck and so was I. And that's because I started to not enjoy training Skeen. And I mean, I absolutely adore my dogs and I love my dogs. It's easy to honestly go to a place of resentment when your dog isn't making the progress that you think your dog should be making. Sometimes it's because of potential judgments from other people or comparisons to other dogs or even other dogs that we've owned ourselves. But it's not fair to compare any one dog to another dog. It's not fair to them and it's also not fair to us. So the first question that I've had to ask myself and that I would also ask you is, do you enjoy training your dog? Because if you're not enjoying the training, there's a pretty good chance that your dog is not enjoying the training either. Okay, come. <laughs> good job. Think for a moment about your least favorite teacher or maybe your least favorite boss. Now, this would tend to be a person that 
doesn't come across as if they like you very much. So they might be a bit cold or aloof, or maybe they just don't recognize how hard you try or how much you've tried to contribute. Sometimes they might even be exceptionally hard on you and don't recognize really anything good about you. Now, on the other hand, think about your favorite teacher, your favorite boss. These tend to be people that have a lot of energy and a sense of fun, and they recognize when you contribute something, they tend to make you feel as if they like you, and they tend to uplift you and make you feel good about yourself. Now think about you and your dog. Are you that least favorite boss or teacher, or are you the favorite teacher or boss? The things that we do to train our dogs can either contribute to our relationship or sometimes they can take away from our relationship. And sometimes it's not even the exact kind of training, but it's how you feel when you're training. So if you're feeling frustrated and resentful or you're just not enjoying the training, then your dog is likely gonna pick up on that. And sometimes it can actually work in reverse and you can take a few steps backward if you train when you're in that state of mind. With training, it's never a complete straight path forward. You're gonna go forward with your training and sometimes you are going to take steps backward. It's kind of like the cha-cha, but you can control some of those steps backward or at least lessen them if you work on your mindset and your attitude. If you are really, really frustrated with the training, take a break from it. And I mean, you have to cope and manage with whatever behaviors are going on with your dog, but whatever is creating the behavior, take your dog away from that situation as much as you possibly can. I say these things because I too have had to change my mindset and attitude in training my young dog Skeen. It's been said that comparison is a thief of joy. And I really believe that to be true. So in Skeen's case, if I compare him to my previous dogs or my friend's dogs or even other border collies, I can make myself feel very powerless. But if instead I focus on the dog that Skeen could be, and also if I look at his behavior problems as really just logical behavior in his own mind, as a reaction to the circumstances, they're really not problems. They are just behavior. And the awesome thing about behavior is that we can influence a dog's behavior. It's also helpful to remind yourself about all the positive qualities that your dog has. So Skeen is a super sweet and very sensitive young dog. He's very loving and very cuddly. And Skeen is a thinker. So Skeen is in no way aggressive. He is a worrier and he expresses his worries quite loudly. So it's a behavior I do have to work on because it could cause some problems, but I can narrow this down to a lack of confidence. And there are many games and exercises that I can work on to improve his confidence. In reality, a lot of what we call border collie behavior problems are really a result of how we've bred the Border Collie over time. Border Collies are bred to be very focused and very engaged, and they don't give up easily. Border Collies were bred to respond to movement, so it's really no surprise when our Border Collie responds to a bird or a squirrel or a paper bag floating in the distance. <laughs> But just because some of these behaviors may be typical of Border Collies doesn't mean we have to live with them. There is so much we can do to shape a Border Collie's behavior. It's a really good idea to picture in your mind and then put to paper how you would like to see your dog behaving in the future. Would you like to have a happy, confident dog? Would your dog ideally have some independence and be able to stay on their own? Would your dog be easygoing, not bothered by strange sounds, comfortable in new situations? If you can envision where you want your dog to be, it's much easier to work towards a very specific goal. My focus with skiing is to build confidence, relaxation, 
but most of all to build a very powerful relationship. So there are two main areas that I'm going to focus on for Skeen right now. One of them is counter conditioning the things that he finds scary and I'll explain that a little bit more later. And the second thing is to do exercises and games that will help build his confidence and that bring a lot of fun to our relationship. It's a lot to explain in one video, so I will create another video explaining counter conditioning and how I'm specifically using this for Skeen to help build his confidence and to build up our relationship. I'll also do some other videos about some of the exercises that we're doing that build fun in our relationship and that will help boost his confidence. As soon as that next video is done, I will post it right about there. Let's work on this together. See you in the next video. <laughs> Oh, you guys are so cute. <laughs> <laughs>